I'm here with Jace, aka Sham, Melbourne street artist. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> As a professional street artist, how did you get into street art? Um, I started when I was 12, um, just catching the train to school, seeing a lot of art around the train line and around my house, there was a lot of murals. And I suppose music videos, there was a lot of kind of, I was really into like soul and funk music. There was a lot of like the whole breakdance culture coming into that. So always in the background, you know, you have things like this where, you know, that was like so colourful and vibrant that they had it in the background as part of like the hip hop culture. And uh, yeah, just through watching videos and I was always into drawing and I always into, like I was always into dance music as well. So kind of incorporated both the drawing and the dancing. So that's my kind of background. And obviously from drawing just like normal cartoon pictures, um, graffiti has a lot of cartoon characters and like sort of writing text, you could say, like um, lettering. And yeah, I incorporated the both of them and just kind of taught myself. Cool. Are there rules among street artists like codes of practice? Yeah, definitely. I think it's kind of like an unwritten laws where certain levels of artists can't go out over each other's work and there's places where it's legal so you know between between the artists you might have like a an art murals lifespan of maybe two weeks and then it gets gone over and you can't get upset about that because it's a constant evolving space which everyone sort of knows that this wall maybe Hosey Lane or somewhere like that is going to get repainted over by another aspiring, aspiring artist that may want to put their work up. Yeah. And then there's like, um, young generation, like young generation writers that I call them writers, which is like, uh, the graffiti term for artists, mm -hmm. like young kids can't, know, can't go over older artists and their work. And it's kind of like a thing where, uh, what's the saying? Don't go over what you can't burn. So that's a sort of thing that if you can't better this piece that's on the wall right now, then just leave it alone. Right. What do you love about street art? I love the colours of street art. I love the self-expression of it where there's no rules. You can paint whatever you want. The diversity within that, you have your like traditional graffiti writers, which is a letter-based form of uh, street art you could say or you have mural type art where it's more based on figures and shapes and you know street art can also be uh, the whole stenciling culture uh, wheat paste there's all different areas of street art me in particular I specialize in uh, graffiti art or aerosol art which is letter based cool and uh, yeah, mostly based around words, like morphing the letters. Could you tell me about any of the work that you do with kids to help them, help them get through their teenage years? Uh, yeah, I'm a teacher at Caulfield Park Community School, which is a school for troubled kids. And uh, I basically teach street art, stenciling and music production there. And basically a lot of, you know, a lot of kids either drop out of school or, you know, in, constantly in trouble with police or have family problems and they kind of lose their way as far as their education is concerned. So I kind of step in and, you know, a lot of kids are interested in, you know, graffiti, music, and to re-engage them into concentrating and, um, you know, getting into a school environment, we teach them street art and stenciling as a way of, you know, getting them focused again. And yeah, it's been going and I've been there maybe two years and it's going well and lots of kids are getting involved. And, you know, I also do workshops like with kids, you know, in and out of jail or, you know, take on younger generation guys that may be in trouble on the street and kind of get them focused on, on art and being creative rather than uh, destroying. That's great. How do you get commissioned and promote yourself? I suppose getting commissioned jobs, you know, like graffiti is only illegal if you don't have permission. So 
you know, if you want to paint a wall out there or get work, you can either just ask or create a folio of work where, you know, that best represents yourself and your style of painting. And, you know, hopefully there's a business out there or a wall or your local milk bar that wants a theme on their wall. And, you know, if you can show them photos and your kind of examples of your work, you know, someone out there might say yes. And then you got, you know, you build that catalog of work and you end up getting the bigger corporate jobs as you get older and you can make a living of it. There's a lot of artists out there that are now full-time street artists. Yeah. Cool. It's great. How do you promote yourself online? There's a lot of ways, I, I guess, you know, uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. Um, there's like LinkedIn even if you want to get involved in that. Flickr is another one. I tend to promote myself through mostly Instagram. I sell a lot of canvases and, you know, present my work on there. And as far as sort of like blogs are really good as well, if you want a daily update of, say, an artist's life, you can present yourself on that. So, yeah, just a lot of social media. And, the, you know, you can monitor things like Instagram and stuff. You can monitor, you know, whether you're doing good work or not by the amount of hits you're getting or comments and stuff like that. So it's a good tool. Cool. Who are your idols? I guess I have favorite artists. I, I wouldn't say I have idols. There's definitely artists I've, you know, admired and looked up to their work and are influenced by. And mostly graffiti writers, actually. I don't know, maybe, maybe guys that have, you know, had real hardships and kind of battled through them and are making careers out of it now. I really admire that, where they've stuck to their art, stuck to their personal style, and are now, you know, reaping the benefits of staying true to themselves, I guess. Most people have heard of Banksy. What makes him so famous? I think he's uh, really conscious of using the media really well and promoting himself in unique ways. You know, setting up scenarios where the the public, general public react to it and take, you know, because his stuff's on the street. A lot of people Instagram his work and it just kind of spreads through the internet. And, yeah, a lot of his images have messages behind it, whether it's, like, political or, you know, tongue-in-cheek kind of stuff. He's always doing something that gets into the media, which is really cool. And yeah, he's just promoting himself so much that it's kind of cool to own a Banksy. <laughs> it's good. Do your art pieces have a message? If so, why is that important? Sometimes. It depends how I'm feeling. Like most of my stuff is trying to capture an energy or a certain look. Like I like real kind of traditional 80s graffiti because it was what I looked at when I was growing up and the impact of a giant piece and characters and, you know, like a certain, you could say, style within the graffiti lettering. So I try and recapture that and, you know, maybe incorporate different cartoons that I may have watched as a kid and, you know, was influenced by, I like, you know, just traditional letter-based graffiti. Yeah. What advice do you have for kids who tag our streets? Dealt with a lot of kids that tag our streets. And the only advice I could give is it's just going to lead you into trouble. Like most kids that have a destructive mentality rather than a creative one always end up in trouble. Might be three, four years down the track. Might be, you know, the first week or two that they're vandalizing or whatever. But everyone I've ever met, I've been painting for 26 years and everyone that kind of went down that road, either, you know, got a criminal record or, uh, you know, blacklisted police and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's nothing but trouble mm. after a while. It may seem fun at the start and, you know, the adrenaline gets going and stuff like that, but in the end, either, you know, the general public, your, your community around where you live, you know, the more you do it, the more people start recognising you and... You know, unless you 
keep your mouth closed and kind of are like a phantom, the more you want to get famous and, you know, be out there and do all this destruction, people are going to recognize it and it's going to catch up to you in the end. Would you be able to tell us about the image in the alleyway? Yeah, um, this latest piece is uh, me kind of capturing, there was these old 80s record covers, like rap records or hip hop records. And they had this cover art, I can't remember the artist's name. And they had these like robots and I tried to reincorporate those kind of images and, you know, 80s glasses and cool kind of hip character sort of overlooking my piece. And the piece says Shem. And uh, yeah, just tried to push my style a little bit. Every every year I kind of change and change the lettering and kind of, you know, try and better myself and better my style and get, get cleaner as an artist. Could you tell us about the piece in the alleyway? Yeah, uh, this piece in particular says Shem and uh, incorporates a cartoon character which is based around these old record covers of uh, this 80s hip hop record and they always used to have these cool cartoons on there. I tried to recapture that energy off the record cover onto the wall. And um, yeah, just try and push my letter style, which I have the same word shem and you know, you can't paint the same style every piece, otherwise your whole collection of photos will look exactly the same. (laughs) So I try and push the lettering, the shapes, the color choices, Um, Yeah, so this one's kind of more of a triangular uh, piece rather than a more sort of flowing round kind of one that I'm sort of known for. I'm known for a wild style, which is more intricate, lots of arrows, lots of movement, lots of kind of hiding the letter. So yeah, I'm, I'm known for that mostly. Cool. What's been your most amazing artistic moment? Hmm, there's been a few because I've been painting for such a long time but lots of big corporate jobs like I painted at the uh, Grand Prix which was really cool dead in the center of the whole uh, race they had us uh, paint a giant billboard of the Grand Prix and uh, yeah it was great over three days that was really cool another one I won the Iron Lac best piece competition a couple of years ago which is a paint brand Iron Lac yeah, I won 250 cans. So that supplied me with paint for a year. <laughs> that was really cool. Cool. Yeah. What are your top three tips for the next gen of street artists? I always tell young kids to find a positive role model that might hand down their experience with street art or painting. So it's a lot easier to learn from someone than try and go and figure it out yourself. You might shave off 10 years of if someone hands down their experience and teaches you the little things that, you know, you might, might learn along the way. Always draw, you know, like a lot of sketching. It's very hard to just paint on walls or, you know, it's always good to find a space, maybe like a permission wall that you might, you know, can go every weekend and paint and, or somewhere where you're not going to get into trouble. And you can focus your energy on, you know, creating something really good and bettering yourself. Yeah, so that's my tips. Cool. Thanks, Jace, for coming to the interview and sharing your street art experience. Not a problem at all. Cheers. Good to meet you. You too.